very often the case. You have no source code, so that, again, that creates a basis of technological uncertainty, but they'll want you to be specific as well. There's a lot of judgment. Where does the project start? The project starts from the point that you can first phrase the technological uncertainty. When you can say, on this date, April 8th, I wrote down, here's the problem. Then any data that I start to gather from that would be eligible. So there's a, there's a question, you know, well, is this evaluating the five products in or out? I'm saying, well, when did you first phrase the uncertainty? If you already had the uncertainty, then it's in. If you didn't, then it's out. And that would be the approach that the Canada Revenue Agency would take. Yes? Yeah. A lot of what we say is, hey, we know we can do this with $50,000 on a mainframe. Now we want to put it on a PC and do it for $5,000 or $500 or $50. So cost reduction is almost always a great basis for improvement. Okay. Uh, last of the 94 projects, scaling versus speed versus compression. So what we're told here, and again, these are illustrating very much the same kind of issues. A competitor announced it could encode one gigabyte of data in seven seconds, and they benchmarked the type of machine. 400 megahertz Pentium 3 processor. Because obviously, if we change the processor, we're, we're comparing apples and oranges. So they're very specific. Our objective is we hypothesize we can take this Pentium lookup, uh, look ahead function and use it to scale the higher speed platforms, okay? allowing us to take our existing software and do the <coughs> encoding one gigabyte in five seconds. So our competitors in seven, and we want to beat them. We want to get down to five. We're saying that the key technological problem that we identify is to determine how we can quantify compression as a function of bytes processed, because we're doing it in parallel, and what the related speed comparison trade-offs were. So the first activity, we benchmark X number of different platforms. Again, you would say 550, 500, 7, whatever it is. We tested X number of prototype algorithms. Again, you don't want to do it like the CRA did in that example. You want to be specific to how many algorithms. And ultimately, you had success via some result. And I'm saying, I don't care really what the successful result was. I'm more interested in what didn't work and what we concluded about what we didn't know at the start that we now know about those issues. Okay? If you can provide that, that's our technological advancement. And again, often the failures are the strongest source of that rather than the ultimate success of the product. Okay. Going right on, the, the next issue is that the CRA says we don't want the 30, 40 page PhD thesis on this. We want the executive summary. And for all projects being submitted for 2009 year ends or anything being filed after June 30th of this year, you're going to have to apply this new format that I'm going to talk about very quickly. What the new format is, it says for the square you have basically 350 words, for the triangle you have 350 words, and for the, act the circle, the activities and conclusions, you have 700 words. It's not actually words, it's characters. So it works out to about seven characters a word, seven and a half characters a word, depending on the tax software that you use. The CRA uses an example of a data warehouse development project. I've added some of these quantifications, but what they said that <coughs> really the departure from standard practice is they thought they have an existing data warehouse management system and they want to improve it to be faster. And they're saying that, and for a series of, of criteria. They're saying that the real departure is that they looked and they did studies on the internet and they looked at competitive products and they could find no relevant methods to characterize non-uniform dynamic data. They say most of the methods that we look at either deal with static data or more uniform data. And we have disparate data that's not uniform, that's changing dynamically all the time. Large databases, so it's very, uh, it doesn't make sense to go through a whole database. You want to keep track of changes and develop the methods to evaluate that. Their objective is to improve existing performance. They say their CPU utilization is very busy at 95% and that if they can achieve this, they hope to get down to 70%. Okay, so reduce the CPU load. Response time, uh, I've plugged the number, 60 seconds. Maybe they want to get down to 15 seconds. And data compression, maybe we have five to one as our current performance and we want to go to 15 to one. Again, the example doesn't provide these metrics. They talk about the variables. I'm saying for a claim to be eligible, you would want to provide the metrics. You would not want to submit it in the way the CRA provided its example, or you would tend to get a site visit, in my opinion. Again, they, the key uncertainty is, again, related to departure from standard practice. They didn't know if they could find methods to characterize the non-uniform data or what the best method would be. Furthermore, they didn't know about the methodology to handle that once they got it going. They're saying, should we complex? compress the data blocks, or look at entire tables. You know, different methods to organize and manipulate the data. The investigation itself here is then very detailed. They provide five specific activities that they do in order to achieve this. What I've done on this project is then to go in with you and show how you would input this using our rdbase.net program, which is an ASP app. It's, it's internet-based, and it allows the managers to set up different criteria. So you can set up a project with a square. 
The square is basically the background data. Name, project number, start end date, whether it's an, adva an advancement of a product or improvement, and really what'd you do? How'd you benchmark standard practice? Well, we looked at 33 websites, we found 14 articles. Well, we looked at six competitive products and found no methods to characterize non-uniform data. We looked at two in-house technologies and they became our benchmarks for what's our CPU utilization, response, and compression issues that we're trying to improve. Um, maybe we looked at over 100 potential components, open source, closed source, whatever, add-ons that you have to pay for, determine uh, there's some good ideas here, but nothing really cut the mustard. Okay? And maybe we queried three experts about the methods to characterize non-uniform dynamic data and they said, hey, it's, it's possible, but we have no solution here. Perfect. Now, this would be above and beyond what you would typically see, but this would be a very strong claim. If you could provide that kind of evidence that you took the steps before you started to work to see what information is readily available to someone with basic training in the field, given the resources of your firm. Again, with the objectives, we've said their main objectives they outline are CPU utilization, response time, and data compression. Our current performance may be 95% busy, 60 seconds, 5 to 1, and our objectives. What I track here is did we, as a result of any of our activities, have results on those? And in fact, we did, and we'll see as we go through. 